Hello, and thanks for taking the time to view this short discussion on mealybugs and you. It's always a good idea to start with a basic definition of what it is you are hoping to manage. In this case, a devious, bothersome annoyance seems to fit the bill quite nicely here. Why are mealybugs an issue? In addition to causing direct plant damage through their feeding, which can cause yellowing leaves, distorted growth, premature leaf drop, and even plant death, mealybugs leave behind sticky honeydew, which can develop into sooty mold, as well as attract ants who are keen to farm the mealybugs for that sweet honeydew and protect them from natural predators. On top of all that, mealybugs are very hard to contact, given the cottony waxy protection as well as the fact that they prefer tight spaces. Here are some of the topics we'll be touching upon in these next several minutes. We'll start with some biology and life cycle information, then discuss detection, dispersal, and damage. Then we'll touch upon some of the more common nursery greenhouse mealybugs and finish up with a discussion on cultural and biological controls, as well as management with conventional chemistry. Here are some basic facts on mealybugs. They are so named for the white cottony or mealy secretion that covers their bodies. Females are wingless and mobile throughout their lifespan, which can last an average of 88 days. Females can typically lay 100 to 200 eggs, but can be as many as 600 in a cottony egg sac over the course of 10 to 20 days. One species, the long-tailed mealybug, actually gives birth to live young. Once the first instar crawler hatches, it moves from the egg mass, settles on the leaf, and starts to feed. They then start producing the wax filaments that cover their bodies. Male and female mealybugs are identical through the second instar. After the second instar, males pupate and winged adult emerges with minimal wax coating. They are weak flyers, fragile and short-lived. Females go through a third instar before becoming an adult. Mealybugs can have two to six generations per year, depending upon climate. Timing to complete the life cycle can take six weeks to two months, depending on environmental conditions. The key with mealybug is to prevent them from getting established in your greenhouse or really anywhere in your nursery. Always thoroughly inspect any new plant material brought into the nursery. Employ a rigorous and regular scouting program, paying special attention to any ant activity, as it could be an indication of mealybug scale or aphids. Also check the root balls and under the edges of containers for the telltale white mealy substance. If mealybug are found, it is often better to destroy that plant rather than trying to eliminate the pest. Mealybug can move about in a few different ways. Crawlers can balloon and be blown about and dispersed by the wind. Odds are they are most likely to hitchhike on pots, soil, plants, or people. Although the males are winged, they are not good flyers and do not live long. Mealybugs have piercing sucking mouth parts and cause plant damage in several different ways. They can feed on the roots, crown, stem, leaves, flowers, and fruits of the plant, removing energy from the plant and eventually weakening it. Some species, like the citrus mealybug, inject toxins as they feed, causing additional damage. Of course, mealybugs secrete honeydew that is conducive for fungus growth and the creation of sooty mold. And as we all have probably experienced, it is very difficult to remove sooty mold. There are several common mealybug pests in the nursery, greenhouse, landscape, and agricultural settings, including the citrus, long-tailed, Madeira, obscure, and pink hibiscus mealybugs. There are also some root mealybugs and the solanum and striped mealybug. The most common mealybugs found in greenhouse settings include the difficult to control Madeira mealybug, citrus mealybug, long-tailed mealybug, and root mealybug.
Some prominent characteristics of the Madeira mealybug are three rows of white structures on the back, two dark stripes on sides with the central white stripe. There's fringe present and short filaments around the body, an ovisac tightly woven and covering body except for the head, has a wide host range, including most of the United States, and it's very difficult to manage. It's no wonder it's difficult to control egg masses with all this great protection shielding the eggs from outside effects, including chemical sprays. Citrus mealybug is the most common greenhouse mealybug pest occurring throughout the USA. The adults, adult females are orangish or pinkish, and some prominent characteristics include faint dark purplish line down the middle of the back, short fringe, slightly curved filaments around the body, an ovisac loosely woven and under the body of the female. Damage of citrus mealybug comes from direct feeding and injected toxins, and it also has a very broad host range. Here's a picture of a citrus mealybug egg mass. Long-tailed mealybug is the most common interior scape mealybug pest. It has long filaments that make up tail and long lateral filaments. The fringe present with thin filaments around the body and one stripe in the middle of the back. It does not have an ovisac and is believed to bear live young. It's very seclusive on the plant and so it's hard to detect. Again, it has a broad host range. Root mealybugs are soil dwelling mealybugs that feed on the roots. So to find out about if you have root mealybug, you look at the sides of the root ball for waxy areas. The reproduction of the root mealybug may be parthenogenic, and they do feed on a wide variety of herbaceous plants. The most common method of dispersal is by reusing pots without proper sanitation, but crawlers can also move from pot to pot. Not all sucking insects in the pot are root mealybugs. Some are aphids, such as this popular gall aphid. Here are a couple other potential mealybugs to be on the lookout for. The pink hibiscus mealybug and the banana mealybug. There are some cultural controls that can be implemented to help prevent the establishment of mealybugs in the greenhouse. Sanitation is first and foremost. Remove debris, pots, weeds. Take the time to clean benches between crops. Always remove infested plants instead of trying to treat them. If we're using pots, be sure to properly sanitize. There are natural populations of beneficial insects that can provide some biological control. In fact, biological control mechanisms seem to largely keep mealybug populations in check in the landscape. Here are some beneficial predatory insects that enjoy feasting on some mealybug, starting with the mealybug destroyer, Cryptolamus montezieri. Other lady beetles and lacewings are also fond of mealybugs. There are also a number of parasitic wasps, including Anagyrus pseudococci and Anagyrus dactylopi, as well as Leptomastix dactylopi. Mealybug destroyers develop through four life stages, egg, larva, pupa, and adult. An adult female lives around two months and during her lifetime lays about two to 400 eggs among the egg masses of their host. The adult female's consumption of waxy eggs of egg sac producing insects stimulate certain eggs. At 80 degrees, eggs hatch in about five days after being laid. Each beetle larva can consume more than 250 mealybug nymphs or over 1,000 mealybug eggs as it develops through four increasingly larger instars. Larva feed for about three to four weeks before pupating. Development and reproduction of the mealybug destroyer occurs most rapidly at 72 degrees to 77 degrees 
and relative humidity of 70 to 80 percent. Temperatures below 68 degrees Fahrenheit in short day lengths greatly slow the reproductive rate of this predator. The mealybug destroyer is often unable to control mealybugs during winter months outdoors or in greenhouses unless they are heated and lighted. Development time egg to adult requires about four to six weeks during warm temperatures. About four generations occur per year in California. Green lacewings develop through four stages, egg, larva, pupa, and adult. The adult female lays about 100 to 300 eggs during her several week lifespan. After hatching, larva develop through three increasingly larger instars before pupating on plant surfaces or under loose bark. All stages can occur throughout the year in locations without cold winters. Adults become less active and may stop laying eggs and change coloration during late fall through winter. Especially in locations with cold winters, overwintering is mostly as inactive last instars or pupa within sunken cocoons and bark crevices or other protected locations. Green lacewings commonly have several generations per year. Egg to adult development requires about four to six weeks when temperatures are warm. Anagyrus pseudococci is a solitary endoparasitoid of the citrus mealybug and of the grape mealybug. The adult female wasp preferably lays its eggs singly inside third instar larva and young females of mealybugs. It may also parasitize larva of younger stages. The parasitoid larva hatch, hatches and feeds on the internal organs of its host. And the gyrus completes five larval stages of development followed by the pupal stage. The latter appears within a mummy which is hardened skin of a dying mealybug. The adult then emerges from the host through an irregular exit hole not at the posterior of the mummy. Under sufficient number of mealybugs, a single anagyrus wasp can produce more than 30 offspring throughout their lifetime. Leptomastix dactyl p is a yellowish brown wasp less than one eighth of an inch in length. The adult female lays its eggs in the late instar mealybug nymphs and young adults. After hatching, the larva feed inside the host and develops throughout four larval stages. During development, it turns the mealybug into a brown barrel-shaped mummy. Metamorphosis is complete. After pupating, the emerging adult wasp chews a hole through the mummy and exits. This parasite prefers hosts in warm, sunny, humid environments. At warm temperatures, leptomastix can complete one generation in about three weeks. Naturally occurring parasite populations often provide good biological control of citrus mealybug outdoors. It also has been released in combination with the mealybug destroyer to successfully control citrus mealybug in greenhouses. As in the case of the immature stage of the mealybug destroyer, the predator looks an awful lot like its prey. Make sure to properly identify before jumping to conclusions. It's always a good sign to see parasitized mealybugs. However, if this is on a plant material you hope to sell and not in the landscape, the mealybug evidence may still be visible and may create issues at the retail level. Well, you've done your best to avoid mealybug issues through implementing solid sanitation practices along with robust scouting, but you are still in need of some treatment options to prevent infestation on susceptible plants or to put out hot spots that perhaps are just getting started. Fortunately, there are numerous products in the marketplace that list mealybug as one of the pests controlled that include a nice variety of IRAC codes to choose from with which to build a nice rotation of differing modes of action. This list is not meant to be exhaustive, but gives you an idea of the number of products available. The products listed in green are sold by New Farm. Some products are foliar only, whereas others are systemic and can be applied to the soil. IR4 is a great resource for examining efficacy of various pesticides on various pests. 
Every few years, they will do a summary of the available research and make it available to you, the grower. Check out the IR4 website periodically. And here's the link to the specific one most recently done on Mealybug back in 2020. On to key management strategies for Mealybug. The first instar crawlers are the most susceptible and are the easiest to manage. The key is to identify the hot spots before they blow up. With the cottony and waxy protections, thorough spray coverage is very important and the use of insecticidal soaps, when appropriate, will aid in efficacy. Millibug control typically takes multiple applications, sometimes needing both a soil application and a foliar application to be effective. Some species, such as Madeira mealybug, are difficult to manage with pesticides. And if you are growing crops that you know are susceptible to mealybug, it is a great idea to use a systemic treatment preventatively before a problem has a chance to develop. In conclusion, mealybugs are a major pest in nursery and greenhouse crops. And with pesticide resistance a problem, it is very important to rotate modes of action. Many issues can be avoided with robust sanitation and scouting protocols, but when chemical controls are necessary, thorough coverage and penetration through the waxy cottony protection is paramount. Also, preventatively treating susceptible crops is key. While natural enemies exist, the damage caused by mealybug is long-lasting and not tolerated much by the retail public. Well, that's it. Thanks for taking the time to review this video. Please check out our other videos at newfarm.com backslash USTurf and search for our virtual learning series.